We put together a list of our favorite kitchen items that'll make great gifts for you or anybody on your shopping list. And the great thing about this list is that everything can be had for under $25. And make sure that you stay until the end because we have a gift that is guaranteed to stop your kitchen tears and take your fashion to the next level. The first item everybody should have in their kitchen is a digital food thermometer. And this drastically changed the way that we cooked in our kitchen. Our meat is actually moist now. <laughs> My cooking skills have improved greatly over the past couple years and one of the things that I really struggled with was how long to cook meat and make sure that it was the correct internal temperature without completely drying it out or leaving it too raw in the center. The digital thermometer has pretty much been a life changer for that. If you live in the States, make sure that you have it set to Fahrenheit and not <laughs> Celsius because if it is on Celsius, then you will drastically overcook your meat. I learned that the hard way. The next item on our list is a food scale. This has been such a big game changer for me with learning how to bake sourdough bread and I use it for all of my other baking recipes now too. Many people assume that a kitchen scale is only necessary if you're following some sort of special diet and you need to measure out your portions exactly, but that's not true. As Alex has said, anytime you're doing some baking that's calling for precise measurements, a kitchen scale can be your best friend. Another neat tool that everybody should have in their kitchen is a fat separator. And while it might just look like a fancy measuring cup, it actually does more than that. If you make any stocks or broths at home, this is a tool that you definitely need. It eliminates the whole process of either cooling off your broth completely to remove the fat layer, or using a spoon to painstakingly slowly scrape off the fat layer one by one. The spout is located at the bottom of the measuring cup, so when you pour out your broth, the fat layer stays above the spout so you were able to get nice clean broth for whatever you desire to make. Next up on our list is a magnetic knife strip. This doesn't seem like the most exciting item, but it has truly changed how we food prep in our kitchen. I was skeptical about how great one of these magnetic knife strips could be, but it is wonderful to not have that big knife block sitting on the counter. And now if you hang your magnetic knife strip right where you're gonna be doing most of your food prep, it is so nice to just grab whatever knife you need, do your cutting, and as soon as you're done washing that knife, it's nice to just throw it right back on the wall. With having a magnetic knife strip, it also eliminates that feeling of needing to buy a whole set of knives when you're shopping for new ones. You can just buy one specialty knife at a time because you're just gonna put that one up on the strip anyways. If you're wanting to eliminate some more plastics from your kitchen or just have better tasting coffee, really think about buying a French press. It makes your coffee taste amazing and getting that drip coffee maker off the counter is going to give you even more counter space in your kitchen. I am not a fancy coffee person at all. All coffee always kind of tasted the same to me until we got a French press. I look forward so much more every morning to my first cup of coffee. It is so smooth. We use the same beans that we always use with the drip coffee maker, but it's just a world of difference. And the process doesn't take any longer than it used to. No. You boil some water, you pour it in, you wait five minutes, and it's ready to drink. And even though it is a faux pas to leave the coffee in there beyond the brewing time, it still tastes delicious and remains hot after an hour. A bench scraper is a wonderful must-have tool in your kitchen. Not only for cutting and separating dough, picking up dough, but it also works great for just chopping up a bunch of onions and scraping those up. Carrots, any type of veggies that you're prepping for soups or stews, you really don't wanna use a knife for scooping up items like that because it dulls your knife even that much faster. I really like using the bench scraper for just cutting off cheese off the big blocks that we buy. And if you do any cooking with a toddler, the bench scrapers are a really fun tool to have them use in the kitchen where they're not going to hurt themselves like they would with a traditional knife. If you're still pouring your olive oil out of those giant containers that you get from Costco, do yourself a favor and get yourself some olive oil dispensers so you can start controlling your pour. They're very helpful when you are in a rush cooking with two toddlers at your feet. You don't have to worry about any over pouring with them. And olive oil is expensive. So is avocado oil. Whatever that is. <laughs> A garlic press is one of my favorite items in the kitchen to use. I avoided getting one of these for a really long time because I did not think it was necessary and it saves so much time. Not having to peel the little thin skin off of each garlic clove, you just break the cloves out of the bulb, pop the clove in the press and you are good to go. Now I rarely use the garlic press, but I clean it quite often. <laughs> so it's really easy to just rinse in the sink and it pops right into the dishwasher. So being dishwasher safe is a nice bonus. Mm -hmm. 
If you want to take your baking skills to the next level or just appear like you know what you're doing, think about getting a flour sifter. I got one for Alex years ago and she still has it to this day. Now I don't use it very often but I am a cornbread connoisseur and I started running my cornbread mix through it and it makes such a big difference in the cornbread when it's baked. It's a lot lighter and fluffier. It's a really fun tool to have too with toddlers. They love spinning it and sifting the flour and it doesn't make as big of a mess. Another item that you can use for sifting your flour is a fine mesh strainer. This sifts all kinds of flours and you can even do a bigger amount at once depending on the size of the fine mesh strainer you're using. And it also has the dual purpose of sifting flour and being a wonderful strainer for bone broths, your own elderberry syrup, anything that you don't want any teeny tiny little bits to get into. I hate teeny tiny little bits. <laughs> he really does. If you really want to annoy somebody with a large gift, think about buying them some oversized stainless steel mixing bowls. Now we love these because we're gardeners and it's great for hauling produce from the garden to the kitchen. And it's also another way that we can wash produce or store items that we're not quite ready to use in our kitchen. Pretty much a 13 quart, anything above that. We have a 16 and a 20 quart. They seem ridiculous. And when Ben first got them, I was like, what are we ever gonna do with these? but it's crazy the amount of times that I have been so grateful to have them. If you are a potato lover, you are going to want a potato masher for making your own homemade mashed potatoes. There are a couple different kinds out there. This is one of the regular ones that I see a lot. I do like this one for making mashed potatoes, but another reason to have a potato masher that I've fallen in love with lately is making your own homemade refried beans. This guy is where it's at. It's still great for making mashed potatoes too, but it is a whole much easier for using it to make your own homemade refried beans. If you're gonna pick one up, this is the one that I recommend. This guy is also good too. So if you're tired of eating lumpy potatoes from whoever <laughs> the cook is in your life, think about buying them one of these. <laughs> if you're struggling to think of a great gift for the cook in your life, you can't go wrong with an apron and it's a great thing to get for yourself, especially if they are a bit of a sloppy cook in the kitchen. <laughs> I destroy my clothes and kind of everything else around I tend to make a bit of a mess so my apron collection has definitely grown over the years. They come in different thicknesses so you can get that really thick one for the really dirty stuff that you want to do and a thinner prettier one for days you just want to look cute in the kitchen. If you are still struggling to find that perfect gift for the home cook in your life, get them a cookbook. You really can't go wrong with them. There are so many options out there. Whatever you get them, they will be happy with. And I should know because my wife has quite the collection <laughs> of cookbooks. Even in today's modern era where everything seems like it's on the internet, I believe that Alex's true preference is to have that physical book in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it's fun when you get new recipes because it feels like you've got new things to try out in the kitchen. So we have the perfect gift to stop tears in the kitchen. And it's a bit of a fashion statement also. They are the no tear onion goggles. <laughs> I am a person that always teared up very badly at the first slice of an onion. I tried the toothpick trick, the paper towel trick, the bowl of water trick. None of the tricks worked for me. These goggles work. I don't tear up anymore. Honestly, I don't know if that stuff even works for anybody. If you want to stop crying when you're cutting onions, get a pair of these. <laughs> They're non-vented and they are oversized, so they will fit right over your glasses. You can get the job done and you can stop crying in the kitchen and look super cool while doing it. Yeah. If you'd like some more gift ideas for the home cook in your life, check out this video next. Thank you for watching and remember to live free and find your purpose.